Okay, have you ever been so mad, so frustrated, and so upset that you couldn't help but respond? You couldn't help but react? Maybe you felt like this guy. Or maybe you've been super upset that you wanted to do this. <laughs> or maybe, just maybe, you've been in a situation that made you so frustrated and so mad that you just felt like this. Let's be honest. I think we've all felt the type of anger we just saw in these gifts. I know I have. Okay, what really makes me angry is when I see someone being mean to someone else. So, when I was young, my cousin had a best friend, but her best friend was always being mean to her. And one day I said, hey listen, I don't like the way your best friend treats you. And I went over to their best friend and I yelled in her face, stop being mean to my cousin! That best friend was never mean to her again. <laughs> okay, so maybe you can't relate to my exact situation because you wouldn't get as mad as I did about what I just shared, but the one thing we can all relate to is the feeling or the mood behind it all. It's anger, and it's something we all feel. Maybe you get angry when your parents punish you for something but let your sibling get away with it. Or maybe you get angry when you just can't seem to learn that new TikTok dance. <laughs> or maybe you get angry when you lose the big game because of a bad call. Or maybe you get angry when you find out that your friend is talking about you behind your back. Maybe for you, your anger comes from not getting something you want or from somebody else not getting what you think they deserve. Whatever the reason is behind our anger, it can be easy to fall into the trap of letting it take over, of letting it affect how we think, how we respond to others, and how we talk or act. We have a couple of ways of responding to this. Actually, it'll be easier if I go get a prop for this. I'll be right back. Okay, this person doesn't have like arms, but you, you get it, you get it. <laughs> okay, this person right here, let's pretend we're this person. Now, some of us experience what we call outward anger. That's the kind of anger that comes out in really outward, obvious ways. When you lose your temper, when you scream, when you yell, when you punch something, or get physical. When you're angry and everybody around you knows it, you show what you're feeling to everyone around you. Now, others of us have inward anger. You don't necessarily raise your voice or explode, but the people around you know still just how angry you are because of the way you shut down you go silent. You close off. Your anger may not be as loud, but your silence is still screaming the way you feel to the people around you. <laughs> okay, some of us may even have what's called protective anger. Now this one is tricky because it's anger for the right reasons. Like how I got angry at my cousin's best friend for being mean to her. It can be outward, or it can be inward. It's anger about something wrong, or bad, or evil, or unfair in the world. You see those things happening, and anger stirs up inside of you. You want someone to say something, or do something to make it right. Lots of great things have happened in history because of people who experience protective anger. Maybe you've even experienced protective anger when you saw someone being teased on social media. That anger got you to act and stand up for the person that's being picked on. The anger itself comes from the right place, but it's still about the same thing as most of our other anger. The idea that somebody or something isn't getting what they deserve. <laughs> Here's what I think is so important for us to understand in this anger conversation. Anger isn't wrong. The mood, the feeling, the emotion, that isn't a bad thing. It's when it starts to control us or begins to be the boss of us that it has the potential to do more harm than good. So what do we do to manage this mood? This anger that threatens to control us, to hurt us, or to hurt our relationship with others? 
Well, we're gonna take a look at some answers from a guy named James. Now, James was actually the brother of Jesus, so I think it's safe to say that he had a pretty close and personal relationship at the way Jesus lived his life. Here, James was writing to some of the Christians in his time who were spread out all over the region. He was encouraging them to live out what they had learned from Jesus himself. And in this particular passage, he addressed something I think can help us understand how to handle our anger. Take a look. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done and the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For when you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. Oh, okay, so let's break this down for a second. James started with a question. Who is wise and understanding among you? You may have heard that word wise before. To be wise is different from being smart. You earn wisdom by experiencing things. If you're wise, you take what you've experienced and you learn from it. James asked his audience to consider which of them was wise. Were they gonna learn from the things they've experienced and be different going forward? James started by saying that we can show we are wise in the way we live, the way we treat other people, the way we view other people, and the things that we do that demonstrate our faith in God. Those things will be a sign of the wisdom that's living in our hearts. But if we have things like bitterness and envy and selfishness or anger in our hearts, then our actions, our words, and our responses will show that instead. And that's where James is saying that we find all disorder and evil. And if we allow those things to exist in our hearts, they will come out in our lives in the form of anger. That can have the potential to cause a lot of hurt, both to us and others. Anger itself isn't bad, but what we do with it could be. See, when it all comes to anger, we all have a choice. We're always gonna have reasons to get angry, but when we're faced with anger, we can control how we handle it and how we respond to it. We get to decide if we'll let it be the boss of us. And I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be ruled by my anger. And if you feel that way too, then take a look at one more thing James had to say. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? James wanted us to know that if we wanna keep anger from being the boss of us, we have to understand where it comes from. We have to get to the source. And according to him, that source is inside of us. In James's words, the anger starts with the evil desires at war within us. Now that's some pretty dramatic language, but I think what James is saying is this. Our anger is about not getting what we want. It's about selfish or jealous or bitter feelings that are fighting for space in our hearts. And often it's about life not happening the way we thought it should. Maybe we think we should have been the one to get the lead in that play. We think our friends should have treated us better. We think our parents should have tried harder to stay together because that's what our family deserves. Or maybe we feel someone else didn't get what we thought they deserved. We think our siblings should have been punished for what they did to us. We think our boyfriend or girlfriend should be more upset about the breakup. We think our dad should apologize for the way he treats our family. Or our mom should feel bad for leaving us. And all those feelings, those desires and feelings of anger James said are battling within us, well, they're about one thing, control. We have this idea of how life is supposed to be. We want to be in control of the way people act and the way that life happens so that we can be sure our expectations and our desires are met. But as you and I both know, <laughs> that just isn't the way it goes. Our desires aren't always going to be met and people aren't always going to act the way that we think they should act. Life isn't always going to happen the way we want it to happen. And when it doesn't, that can make us feel super angry. Angry at the people around us, angry at our circumstances, angry at ourselves, maybe even angry at God. And as James said, those feelings can damage our relationships. They can lead to fights and quarrels. And let's be honest, a lot of other negative things. Because when we let our anger control what we do, what we say and how we act, it becomes the boss of us. But Jesus offers us a better way. He offers us the freedom from letting our feelings control us. He offers us a way to manage all of our big feelings. Anger doesn't have to be the boss of you. 
Now you may be thinking, well, that's easy for you to say, but when I feel angry, that's all I feel. <laughs> and it feels good to let it out. And listen, I get it. We all fall into the trap of letting our anger control us. But I do think that there are ways we can manage all of these big feelings and not let them be the boss of us. Here's where I think we can start. First, take a step back. When we're angry, we usually feel that we have to react, or we have to respond to every single thing that makes us mad. But the reality is, we don't. We can choose to take a step back. We can decide not to yell, not to text, and not to cut someone out. We can take control and not let anger be the boss of us. And that's a big step. Then be honest. In order to understand our anger, we have to be honest about where it's coming from, like where it's really coming from. What is it in us that's setting us off, making us angry? Maybe it's jealousy or fear or disappointment. Maybe it's grief or pain or frustration. Those not so great desires and expectations that James is talking about, try to name them. The next time you find yourself angry, pause and try to think about why you're angry. What got you to this point? Then talk to God about the reasons for your anger. Invite him into what you're feeling. We don't need to keep our anger from God. He can handle all of our feelings and he wants us to bring them to him. If you're struggling to understand or recognize the source of your anger, talking to someone else about it is another great place to begin. Today, maybe your group is a good place to start. There you can open up to a leader you can trust who loves you and wants to see you live free from the control of anger in your life. Because sometimes talking honestly to someone else can help you see or understand things in a different way. At least that's been my experience. Last, own your part. Now, this one is hard because honestly, we all wanna be angry at someone else or something else. We're mad because we're out of control. <laughs> but there's one thing we can control, ourselves. Maybe someone hurt us but then we said something to hurt them back. Maybe something bad happened, but then we did something back in response. Those things done or said in anger, we have to own them. We have to take responsibility for those things too in order to deal with our anger. When we take a step back, are honest with our feelings, and take responsibility for how our anger makes us react, we're choosing to be wise with our anger. We're choosing to look at what's going on inside of us and make changes going forward. And as we do that, our anger loses its power to control us. It loses its ability to cause us to react or respond in a way that is not healthy. It loses the chance to be the boss of us. So remember, anger doesn't have to be the boss of you. So as you go to group and talk a little bit more about this, I want you to think about this question. What's one thing that really makes me angry? 